How's it going guys? Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new locals feature match. We're in round two and um, we have Sub Terror versus what I believe is Dragoonity uh, Dragon Link or might be Dragon Maid uh, Dragon Link. One of those uh, particular flavors of the Dragon Link deck post ban list of course. Um, but yeah, if you guys haven't seen the round one feature match which was uploaded yesterday, be a link to it up in the top right. Uh, as well as a recent video I posted. It's probably the best video I've ever posted. If you guys want to go check it out, it's a great watch. Feel free to be a link to it up in the top right as well. Um, but we have a sub terror versus Dragon Link. I know it feels weird to say that Dragon Link is still something that is being played, but I mean, the deck already had so many good extenders and engines to work with. Um, it's not really a surprise to see that it still, you know, survived. Um, you know, even with LP and Striker Dragon getting hit, you know, it, it still survives, surprisingly. Not not really surprisingly, but surprisingly. Um, I guess I'm just used to, like, when a ban list, uh, you know, hits a deck that's been powerful for very long, it makes the deck, you know, not very, you know, well played or played at all. Um, but it is what it is. I guess if the power level is dumbed down to the point where it's not the absolute best deck anymore, then I guess the, the job has been done, so... Subterror having a pretty standard turn here. Uh, Pot of Duality finding a Solemn Strike, setting two Normal and Guru, and passing turn there. We're going to see him Normal summon the Dragon Maid, the Parlor Dragon Maid, I believe. Attempt to activate its effect, and will be met with a Solemn Strike. Uh, so, not looking too good there for, for Dragon Link, as I mean, as we know, he uh, did get a duality off of the, uh, or did get a strike off the duality, so he had to expect that that was coming. Uh, but does he have the extender? Um, one thing that I'm used to seeing, though, is the Dragon Link deck particularly not needing its normal summon. Uh, oftentimes, you know, using the normal summon midway through the combo, but this seems to be a bit of an exception here, where the normal summon was, you know, the linchpin. And uh, that does it for Dragon Link. Passes over to Subterror. Set one card, swing in with Guru. And, uh... Passes it back. Dragon Link tries to start with Nurse. That's met with a Solemn Strike. And a <laughs> Judgment for World Legacy Guard Dragon. So just we're just out here saying no. Um, our Dragon Link player is not getting to use his cards whatsoever. Pass it back to Subterror. We'll swing in for another 16. Cave Clash is luckily for our Dragon Link player not giving any boosts right now because he does not have any other set monsters on his field. And our dragon player is going to slap that nurse onto the field and attempt to use its revive effect of a dragon maid. And we'll see if our sub terror player is that good to have another response here. And it looks like nothing on effect activation. So he'll get to bring out the parlor. And on summon, we're going to see a dogmatic of punishment. Um, so, still getting stopped here yet again. He's going to send Antis. And that's going to pop the Nurse. Parlor's effect, of course, will still go through to Foolish Burial. And uh, the Parlor will also get cleared by the Entis as well. A nice little uh, two for one there, if you will. So I think he sent Dragon Maid Changeover. I know there's a bit of a glare there, but uh, sent the Fusion spell for Dragon Maids. And not much else he's going to be able to do there. Not really many uh, extenders that are, you know, accessible in his hand right now, I guess. Uh, just solely has been relying on the Dragon Maid engine. But it looks like he will get damage in with both Nemesis and Guru here. It looks like possibly in the end phase we'll see the tidying. Yes, he could have blocked damage there, but it wasn't going to be game, so there's no real need to do so. Or no, he sent Tiding off that last uh, parlor. Now sending Changeover. Had it mixed up. Because uh, while I was editing this, putting all the life points together, I strictly remember him sending the Fusion spell at one point. Um, but yeah, so he'll go ahead and send that now. And it looks like going to use the Guru to book itself and another monster face down, the Nemesis. It's going to allow, it, uh, allow him to summon the Umastrix to the field. And he's going to flip up the Guru. And that will be met with an Ash, so I uh, will not be able to uh, continue to pile on the advantage here. Probably would have gotten a Phoenix off of that, maybe a, a final battle, but uh, Phoenix probably would have made more sense just to get another in the gate, uh, since card advantage is pretty low right now for our sub player. 
I don't think he has any cards in hand at the moment. And it looks like changeover was used in the grave to bring back uh, a card to hand alongside itself. And now summoning back out the parlor here. And parlor effect sending out the tidying and now activating changeover from hand to send Ernest and parlor to go for a fusion summon. Probably going to go for the house dragon maid. I'm surprised I actually remember all these dragon maid names. Um, but I believe a little while ago we did actually have a dragon maid duelist on the channel. So, um, or no, this is a dragon maid show. That's right. And it's a, a spin on house dragon maid because they just mix up the letters in house. And show is the new name. I actually just realized that, uh, not now, but when I did that uh, feature match um, many, many months ago, I had that realization. I'm like, wait, the small dragon, na dragon maids' names are the big dragon maids' names, but they're just all jumbled up to, you know, make new names. Pretty cool. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and link off into the Dragoonity Knight Romulus now. And going to search the Dragon's Ravine. No surprise there, really. And going to activate Ravine, pitching a Gamma. Uh, so, yeah, Gamma... Gamma's a pretty strong card here. I mean, hitting the Guru is all right. Um, but the biggest threat so far in this particular match has been the back row, more than anything. And did, is, am I seeing this? Did he just discard another <laughs> Gamma? Uh, and that's, yeah, double Dragon Ravine, discarding double Gamma, and now we're going to see some Dragon, or uh, some Dragoonity shenanigans, and synchroing for the level 6 Dragoonity, I'm not sure what its name is, uh, he's going to pitch Baby Rock to the grave, and I believe that when that card is discarded, it summons itself to the field. I believe that's Gay Dirge, or Gay Dirg, or whatever its name is. I could be totally butchering it. Um, level 6 Dragoonity Synchro. But we're probably going to see him step up into the Crystal Wing, uh, as is uh, pretty common in newer Dragon Link combos here. And, yeah, it looks like the show will bounce itself back to negate a guru effect it looks like negate and destroy and then tagging out into the house dragon maid because i believe he po uh, possibly tried to use the effect there of guru to book uh his level six synchro luckily he had the uh the omni negate there to to put a stop to that and he's going to synchro for none other than crystal wing he's going to run into the set nemesis and Going to take a read on Crystal Wing here. Wonder what the exact dispute is. But I don't think it'll matter too much here. So yeah, he will swing into the Umastrix. And that effect will activate when flip face up to banish. And Crystal Wing will go bye-bye. And Romulus will get a swing in for 12 and... That is going to do it for game one. Uh, Dragon Link surprisingly making a comeback there. Was not looking very good at the start of that game one. Uh, double strike, judgment, uh, just seemingly having the answer to everything. But unfortunately, our uh, sub terror player was not able to keep up uh, the needed advantage to be able to take that game. As we head into game two, of course, quick shout out to Imperium Duelist. If you guys are interested in picking up amazing playmats, sleeves, deck boxes, dice, backpacks, new top loaders, they've got all sorts of amazing gear on their website. Link below, as well as a discount code that you guys can use to save 10% off your entire order. Winner kill sent off at checkout. All that information down in the description below. And what else is in the description is a affiliate link to TCG Player. If you guys shop and check out using that link, a small bit of the revenue from your purchase will go right back in the channel and helps out a ton. So uh, Sub Terror again having a pretty standard turn, a little bit better this time than we saw in game one with that D shifter. Very, very high impact card. Although I don't know how high impact against this particular variant of Dragon Link. I know the previous versions that at least this specific Dragon Link player was playing uh, were more chaos oriented, much more graveyard reliant. 
Uh, and, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a Tikaboo. That's gonna be, that's gonna hurt quite a bit. Not only is his graveyard cut off, um, but he now can only control one dragon type monster, which is gonna be a problem, of course, playing the Dragon Link deck. Uh, so it's not a surprise that he's going to pass his turn after that. And Guru's gonna flip itself down alongside another monster on the opponent's field that sort of like a double book a moon or I think uh, Guru might have to might be able to uh, book a monster on your side of the field as well and your opponent's side um, so he's going to book that parlor then flip itself back up to go ahead and search Umastrix and of course uh, you know the sub terror deck can play under uh, there can be only one quite easily so gonna be able to play here with pretty much no restrictions uh, so going to summon the Fiendus, that is going to flip itself down, and I believe when a monster is set face down, Umistrix can summon itself to the field, and using the Hidden City to flip up Umistrix to banish that set parlor, and swing in for some damage, and that will do it for our sub terror player's turn. Things not looking pretty hot here for our Dragon Link player. Tikaboo is up, Guru is up on the field, and so are two other set back row. So at this point, if you're the Dragon Link player, you know, you're really not going to be doing much this game unless you can find uh, some side decked back row removal here. That's pretty much going to be your only way out. I don't know how a deck like this would have access to something like Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, I'm assuming that pretty much all engine cards in the deck that are monsters are going to be Dragon. Uh, so, oh, well, I guess, you know, if you can uh, let a Droll Knockbird stick on the field and get a dragon on board, then you can make it happen, but I highly doubt we'll see that. Um, so, Ramus being pitched to add Ravine, and then Ravine being activated, pitching Droll and Lockbird, which is um, not the best card to have in this particular situation. Looks like he also had a copy of Baby Rock in hand as well which I don't know how beneficial that is to have right now, but uh, would probably rather be a Twin Twister or something like that. So we're going to see him add Legatus off of the Ravine. And then we're going to see one of the actually newer uh, Dragoonity support cards. I mean, Remus is a newer card as well, but this is Dragoonity Glow, I believe. And is a brand new normal spell card from Ghost in the Past. Says add one level five or higher Dragoonity mods from your deck or graveyard to your hand. Banish this card from your grave, then target one monster card in your spell and trap zone, equipped to a Dragoonity monster, special summon in defense position. Uh, so I believe he added Mistletane there off of the Dragoonity Glow. And now we're going to see him revive Ramus with a World Legacy Guard Dragon. Alright, so now Dragon Link player has successfully established a Dragon Monster. But that is pretty much all he's probably going to be able to do. I, I don't see... Okay... We have a Tidying. Tidying could be absolutely huge here. Going to bounce back his Ramus and one of the cards the opponent controls. Go for that Tikaboo. Looks like that's going to be... And Solemn Judgment. Okay. <laughs> we, we got close. We got close to outing that Tikaboo, but Tikaboo plus Judgment. Yeah, try again. Uh, <laughs> that's that's a really, really rough. Um, yeah, Dragon Link really really struggling here uh so it looks like he's going to i don't know he's revealing mistletane here i'm not sure exactly what is the matter but uh mistletane says you can special this summon this card from your hand by sending one face up dragoonie monster towards the graveyard when this card is one more special summon from the hand you can target one dragoonie monster and you can ever equip that target to this card so i assume he's trying to use mistletane uh, by sending off that uh, ramus Seeing if he'd be able to do it under There Can Be Only One. And I believe a judge did walk over quickly um, in the original footage. Uh, and uh, was probably told that he could not do such a thing under everybody's favorite trap card. There Can Be Only Fun. So, looks like end phase is about to show up. Guru's going to book itself and Umistrix. And he's going to start off after drawing for turn by flipping up both the... Fiendus and Guru. Going to grab, of course, another copy of Fiendus here. This is where the advantage is going to start snowballing here. Using those floodgates, of course, to control the pace of the game. Flipping up Umistrix. Banishing Remus. Now normal summoning Archer. 
And yeah, no surprise, we see our Dragonling player scoop it up right then and there, and we are into a Game 3 situation. Uh, and of course, it's going to be no surprise that our Dragonling player will want to go first. Here, our Dragoonity Dragon Maid deck, whatever you want to call it. Dragoonity Dragon Maid, Dragoonity Dragon Maid, Dragon Link, whatever. Uh, there's a familiar face. Uh, Chamber Dragon Maid getting things started here as the normal summon, sending off copy of Tidying. You all know how good that card is. Almost came in very, very or adding a copy of Tidying, rather. Uh, so adding that to the hand and then getting linked off here into Striker Dragon. So far looking very familiar, not activating Striker Dragon's effect uh, to grab the Boot Sector Launch. Instead, going to use that Guard Dragon immediately to bring back the Chamber and then link into Romulus. Which I guess makes sense, you know, if you're playing the bigger Dragoonity package, you're not going to have the room necessarily uh, for those Rocket cards. Um, so just going right to Romulus as soon as possible, getting access to Ravine, and with it the Dragoonity Engine, discarding Tempest off of Ravine. Uh, and then adding Remus, Remus discarding itself to add another Ravine, activating Ravine, and we'll see him activate its effect again here. And I believe he discarded a Dragon Maid, I think I see a Gold Rare Border. Uh, so he's going to add Legatus, and Legatus is going to get summoned. Uh, if you control, yeah, if Dragon Ravine, just summon it from the hand, and that is going to revive the Remus from the grave. And since I have all the Dragoonity monsters pulled up, yeah, it's Gay Derg, or Dirg. I I don't know the pronunciation on half of these uh, Dragoonity monsters. I I have to say that they're probably some of the toughest cards to pronounce in Yu-Gi-Oh, um, because a lot of their I mean just if you're bored, go on Dueling Book and look at all of the synchro names for all the Dragoonity monsters. Especially the 7 and 8. Well, I guess the 8 one is not so hard. Or the level 10 one. Like, they're uh, pretty pretty complicated. Um, so, it looks like we'll see him get to a Crystal Wing with a Tidying set and a Romulus on board. The only thing that would make this better would be, you know, if he had a Spheres. Um, that would have made the board much better. And we're going to see Dark Hole be activated. My goodness! Good old trusty Dark Hole getting the job done. Wiping that Crystal Wing off the board. Completely neutralizing the, th the threat of tidying. Um, I mean, I will say as our sub player resolves terraforming for Hidden City. And so on and so forth. I will say that is a very risky card to play. Uh, solely because, you know, as most of us know, there are so many incredible boss monsters in the game right now. A lot of them which have you know, uh, little lines of text on them that say they can't be targeted, which luckily, you know, Dark Hole is pretty good, doesn't target right, but they also can't be destroyed by card effects. Um, so we got lucky in this instance that the board uh, was able to be affected uh, by a card like that. I don't know. Is, is, is this a potential format where we could see cards like Raigeki and Dark Hole shine? Um, I mean, we see light, Lightning Storm obviously sees a lot of play, but it's mainly used, I feel like, for the most part, uh, to clear those back row heavy strategies. Um, but then, of course, Dragoon is always lurking in the background, just laughing at cards like that. But, I mean, it did a pretty good job here at clearing a somewhat okay board. Uh, so, Duality will be activated. I think he found a copy of Solemn Strike off that again. I uh, could be wrong. Um, but yeah, he's going to summon the Guru, activate Cave Clash, and set another card, swing in for 16, and that will do it for his turn. Uh, our Dragoonity player checking the graveyard. No surprise there, he has Tempest in Grave, which is kind of nice. Probably hoping that set card isn't there, can be only one. Probably really, really hoping that, actually. So... I know Tempest is a play right now, and I can't see the rest of his cards in his grave. Oh, I think he has a tight. Well, he has tidying on field still. Um, yeah, there is a bit of a glare there, and I do apologize for that. <laughs> I, I sometimes the glares are completely random. I, I sometimes it just actually depends on where the table is positioned um, 
in the room. So maybe one of these days I'll uh, try to adjust the table to be in a point where there is virtually zero glare because I do realize that that can be frustrating. It's something I've dealt and fought my entire career filming live duels is that pesky glare. So uh, it is just as bothersome uh, to me as it is to you guys. So just bear with me. Um, so Twin Twister being activated. Probably wish he had that in game two, but uh, he'll definitely take it now. Clearing the set and the field spell. He's going to summon Tempest now. And Guru is going to say, nope, you get set face down my turn. And <laughs> he will draw for turn. I think he picked up the duality too. Very nice draw here. Uh, and then he'll go ahead and play another Hidden City. They always have another. And that is going to grab Nemesis Archer. It's going to flip up Guru again, go and get another search. And Raigeki is in the main deck. And so is, uh, looks like, is Dark Hole at three? I, I'm genuinely asking this. Is Dark Hole at three? Because I, th I think I saw two other copies of Dark Hole in the main deck. Is Dark Hole at three? It probably is. I'm going to say it is. I'm going to give our subterra player the benefit of the doubt. Um, yeah, Dark Hole's at three. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, because I, we, we had a dino player at our locals that main dark hole all the time for the uh, popping uh, baby shenanigans with your own dark hole. Uh, so Nemesis will clear uh, that Tempest basically for free, allowing Guru to get in for an additional 16. He'll set two more back row, cut the opponent's deck, and end his turn there. Our Dragoonie, or our Subterra player also has a copy of Gadarla in hand, which is uh, going to be a pretty good rebuttal for any boss monster he's able to put out. Um, Nemesis shutting down that World Legacy Guard Dragon. And end phase, we're going to see a final battle to flip down the Guru, draw for turn, flip up the Guru, frame one Guru flip, and uh, that. This is probably going to spell game here momentarily, uh, unless... I don't know, there's a severe miscalculation on behalf of our sub player. player. Um, but he's going to flip up the Nemesis and normal summon the Fiendus. And then setting Fiendus, and that will trigger Umastrix. And Hidden City will flip up Umastrix. And that is just going to be game right there. Our Dragon Link player has seen enough. So that's going to do it for this video. If you guys want to check out another video of mine, check out these two over on the left. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, a special shout out goes to all of the YouTube members that support this channel. And especially our Divine Level channel members who are Cadillacs84 and Pony Star. Thank you guys so much for your continued and extremely generous support of this channel.